And it actually, it doesn't look too bad for us. Oh, what cooler is that? The coolers keep getting worse. What is this? Building your first gaming PC is pretty scary, especially if you're the type of person that amputates a limb every time you use a blender. <laughs> Actually, come to think of it, if you've ever amputated a limb while using a blender, you probably should buy a pre-built. But anyway, if you're a beginner PC builder, Newegg has a resource that seems like it might be really useful for you. It's called the PC Builder dot beta and yeah, today we're gonna see if it's actually a good resource for beginner PC builders or if you should rather take your chances with the blender. Oh, by the way, this video is not sponsored by Newegg, but I think that'll become pretty obvious later on. While browsing Newegg earlier today, I saw the shiny build a PC button and I was, I very excitedly clicked on it because I thought it was going to be pretty hilarious and it kind of is, uh, but we'll, we'll get into that a bit later. Now, it reminds me a little bit of PC Part Picker's website. Uh, it's got several budgets that you can start off with, so it's like templates at that price point. So we'll have a look at those, and then we'll compare the templates to the pre-built options that they recommend at the end of the video. Down here, they've got a frequently asked questions section, and they've got some reasonable questions with reasonable responses here. What components should I start with? Maybe the CPU so that you know where to go from there. That's reasonable. What form factor? What size? Here it asks, how much RAM should I buy? And the answer is like it was written by a human being that kind of knows what they're talking about, which is a bit unusual for this kind of thing. Uh, it says no less than eight gigs of RAM. If you're only browsing the internet, maybe you can use four gigs. Uh, for gaming, then 16 is gonna be the minimum. So that's, that's all useful information. How hard is it to build a PC? This is also very, very reassuring for the first time PC builder. And then they've got a link to their YouTube channel with a bunch of build guides on it. So that's also, that's, that's very nice and it looks very useful. So let's start off with the sub $1,000 Intel system. Now the reason, the reason that I'm pink with giggling is because uh, this is like the 17th time that I've refilmed this and I keep messing it up, but this, this is gonna be the one. Um, now, at first glance, it, it actually, it looks decent. Uh, it's got a 10400i5 in it, which if you want an Intel chip, that's a pretty good gaming CPU. Uh, Random Gaming in HD actually did a video on it not too long ago, and he, he really likes the chip. Uh, the motherboard is a B460, which is a reasonable pairing with that CPU, considering the fact that you can't overclock it. 16 gigs of DDR4-3200, it's a Rip Jaws kit that's also a very reasonable kit. As far as the graphics card goes though, we've got a $335 RX 5600 XT. That feels like a lot. Let's see. Uh, so let's see what other graphics card options we have in this price point. Um, because I feel like that's a lot for a 5600 XT, right? Like you can get... Yeah, you can get an RTX 2060 for less. I mean, it's it's a pretty losery looking RTX 2060, but still, I think you're gonna get better performance with that there. Uh, you can also get an EVGA version of it. Let's see if you can get a 5700 for that price. I mean, almost, you can get this mech version for $350. So I think that's gonna be a better option. So let's see how much more expensive that becomes if we replace them, change to new item. So it's $15 extra and you're, you're getting a better GPU. So I, I, I definitely do that. But the air cooler is a reasonable choice. You've got a 500 gig SSD, so that's nice. It's an okay power supply for this system. Yeah, that's actually, it's, it's not too bad. Uh, with, that, with that, let's have a look at the AMD $1,000 build and see what that looks like. Build with AMD. A 2600X. For a thousand dollar AMD, that's a previous generation CPU. You've got a B450 board there. The same graphics card as well, so I definitely substitute that 5700 in there or a 2060, depending on what feature set you need. And then you've got this, what is this cooler? This is a 45, so this cooler is more expensive than the Hyper 212 Black, which I will definitely say is a better cooler. And the AMD CPU comes with its own cooler that looks like it's better than that. So what I do here is, why can't I 
Oh yeah, you have to save to That's so irritating that you have to save it to your list every time. But okay, I'll delete that. And then I'll delete uh, this CPU. And then let's see if we can get like a 3600 instead. Oh yeah, it's a little bit more, but you know, we're saving on the cooler. So it comes out at about the same price, but we've got a better CPU cooler. Uh, we've got a better CPU here. Um, and I do the same with the graphics card. Okay, so in all of these prices, they do include like an OEM Windows 10 key price for $110. That's quite a lot. It is the most legitimate way to get Windows. But if you're comfortable with it, there are gray market options for it. So then you can get Windows for like $15 off of eBay or whatever. But bear in mind, you don't know where those keys are coming from. So that's a decision you're going to have to make. Uh, but let's have a look at the other price points. Let's go to Newegg PC Builder and have a look at the sub $2,000 Intel system. And it actually, it doesn't look too bad for us. Oh, what cooler is that? The coolers keep getting worse. What is this? So they start off on such a strong point with the Hyper 212 Black, and then they use this for an eight core 16 thread CPU. I don't know how that slipped through, uh, but that's definitely not good. You should get rid of that. And then, um, yeah, I guess you can get the non-K version. Let's see what cooler options we have. Fan and heatsink should be fine. I mean, you can just you can just drop this bad boy on there. You're not going to be able to overclock the CPU anyway. So I think that's a pretty good choice there. <laughs> it's way better than that other one. Ooh. The power supply is a thermal take one that mm, smart unit. That's okay. These are decent power supplies. Uh, I don't know, if you've used one of those and had an issue with it, let me know in the comment section below. And then they upgrade to a one terabyte SSD, so that's a reasonable upgrade. And then they've got an RTX 2070 Super XC here for $560. So let's see what the other 2070 Supers cost. I mean, it seems like it's in line with what 2070 Supers cost at the moment. Uh, although if you don't need like NVENC and stuff, I'd recommend going with a, a 5700 XT instead because that's going to save you about $100 as you can see here. Oh, you can actually get, is that the XT variant? Yeah, you can actually for $400, you can get that gigabyte. Um, this, this That's like one of the best versions of the card. So you're saving over $100 and you're going to get about the same gaming performance. Uh, and I think the driver issues with those are fixed. So yeah, this one's also fine, aside from that terrible cooler. Let's see what cooler they decide to pair with the sub $2,000 AMD kit. They've got the, the Ryzen 7 3700X, which is a really good choice at that price point. Uh, it's again the Asus version of the motherboard. It's interesting that they always seem to kind of head towards those. Yeah, I, I, I haven't, I don't have personal experience with that X570 board. Yeah, I mean, uh, this one looks pretty decent. We've got a 2070 Super as well. So again, depending on whether or not you need like NVENC or you want ray tracing and stuff like that, I may recommend going for the 5700 XT. And then there's also the consideration that the 30 series is just around the corner at this price point. Um, yeah, so if you can't wait, then maybe you can get one of these, but you're gonna get a lot more performance potentially. We've got a decent case, so-so uh, yeah, power supply, a one terabyte PCI Express Gen 4 drive, that's pretty badass. And then a Gamax cooler. I mean, I've heard good things about this. I think people tell me to look at these a lot. $25 cooler. I'd probably get a better cooler for the 3700X though, because that, that can be a bit of a toasty boy. I'd probably go for something like the Deep Cool Assassin or like, yeah, yeah a, a slightly bigger cooler, but you could get away with that Gamax cooler. So yeah, the, the, the AMD one's not too terrible. Now let's get to the more expensive systems and see how that goes, if Newegg's kind of decently spec'd those out. Let's start off with the $2,000 Intel system. Um, straight off the bat, it looks like you're going to be getting very similar performance to the $1,500 setup. Uh, you still get a 10700, but it's the K variant, so you can overclock it, so maybe a bit more CPU headroom. Uh, a very fancy Z490 board, $300 motherboard for a $2,000 system is is a bit pricey, especially considering the fact that you've only got a, a 2070 Super in here still. So gaming performance, you're spending a lot more money, but you're getting a better case, a better motherboard, and then like a bigger cooler. So yeah, this one's not looking looking as good as the previous one. At this price point, graphics card wise, I'd definitely be aiming for like a 3080. If you can get your hands on one, let's see here. 
Um, if you can't get your hands on one, I just wait because yeah, I, I, I wouldn't buy something like a 2080 uh, at, at this point in time. Yeah, this one's not as good. It's they're they're getting worse as they get more expensive, which is which is a bit weird. Let's have a look at the build it with AMD version. So you're getting a 3900X here, so that's a reasonable upgrade. You're getting four more cores. And then a very fancy motherboard, a $380 motherboard for a for a $2300 system. Oh, you have to save every time. I mean, you could stick with that tough gaming one or you could go for like other ones you could go for like a b450 board honestly this looks like a really good board so like i take that instead you're saving a lot of money there and then the 32 gigs of ram makes sense i'd probably get a bit faster ram definitely not get the 2070 super here and then it's like a weird a bit of a unusual case but yeah anyway that's personal preference if you want that case or not 700 and so it's a decent looking power supply one terabyte ssd and then, yeah, so the, the more expensive, uh, the more expensive systems aren't looking as good as the cheaper ones. And honestly, one of the problems with these setups is that it doesn't really take into account your use case, for example. So like both of the more expensive systems prioritized more powerful CPUs and motherboards over like graphics card upgrades. So if you're like a content creator, that makes sense. But for gamers, that doesn't really make that much sense. So that's one of the issues with this kind of PC builder pre-setup list kind of thing is that it's not necessarily tailored to use case, you know? So now that we've had a look at all of the do-it-yourself configurations, we need to get our pre-built swamp waders out to see what, what pre-built pairings they have at these price points. So let's start off with the $1,000 one. Uh, the first thing that you need to, to bear in mind here is that it is on sale, so it's normally $1,100, uh, but it's $950 now, and on first look, it actually looks more promising than the Intel build, although this case looks like something that would give Gamers Nexus Steve a brain aneurysm. <laughs> look at that, look at that lack of front airflow. But anyway, as far as the CPU goes, it's the same as the do-it-yourself Intel build. And then we've got an RTX 2060. So it's actually a better GPU than they recommended getting for the build-it-yourself system. So yeah, weirdly enough, the pre-built option may actually give you better gaming performance. Although the motherboard, mm, we can't really see what motherboard there is in there and you're probably gonna get a worse power supply. So do bear that in mind. It's not necessarily a better option. Uh, let's see what the sub $2,000 pre-built looks like. Uh, it's the same company, I think. $1,300, so that's also on a pretty big sale, 20% off. It's got a 2070 Super in it, so it's the same GPU, it's the same CPU, the 10700, as the Intel option. And yeah, it's, it's very similar actually. So it seems like what they do is the pre-built version is just the Intel build it version. Uh, but then they pre-assembled it for you, which it's actually, funnily enough, it's actually cheaper to get the pre-built option. Uh, but again, you're going to get a better motherboard and a better power supply here. And then finally, let's have a look at the $2,000 premium boy pre-built option. Uh, well, it starts off with a 9900K, which is a previous gen CPU. That's not great. And then you've got a 2080 Super. It's probably because the 3080s aren't really in stock anywhere still yet. Um, so that may be why. $1,700 for this setup's not looking too exciting. And it looks like it's got the same case as the $1,000? Is the like the cheapest one? Yes, I think it's the same case. <laughs> and that's a pretty crappy looking case. So this one does not look great. Actually, the best looking setup here for the pre-builds is definitely this one. Uh, although, again, you don't know what the other components are that you get with it. Some of these builds were were not amazing. I mean, the fact that like with a $2,300 system, they're pairing a $380 workstation oriented motherboard. Like, yeah, you, you do need to substitute out at some of these components. So if you're a beginner, uh, definitely run these builds past like a Discord group or something before you just pull the trigger on them. If you like this video, do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next video, bye-bye.